Since we're talking about medals, let me take it across to Peter McQuarrie, who also joins us on the show right now. Peter, hi, always good to speak with you. Uh, what's the latest with metals? Because this morning we were reading reports that iron is taking quite a bit of nosedive back to the $90 level. Crude hasn't really managed to pick up. Uh, what are the big headlines that you are watching out from the world of commodities right now? Well, good morning, Aisha. Welcome from Sydney. I'll tell you what, a couple of things. It's been a big sell-off and that continued downdraft has been, I think, very contagious. Traders are really all over it and you can see the chart there. That tells the story as far as what we've seen in the last number of months. Big sell-off and that real big pressure to the downside. So I feel as though that might bounce, but you've got that structural weakness in China and the overall demand picture is looking fairly poor. You roll that across to energy prices and wow, it's just been a time to be short. So you don't go against a trend when it's like this. Kunj also joining in. Good to have you back. So, Peter, what has changed which suddenly seems to be getting this entire recessionary fear or slowdown fear back in the system? Because what I have seen over the years is that when dollar index goes down, commodities, they go up. How come this historical correlation is not at play this time? Well, Nikunja, good morning. It's good to see you. I think a couple of things. First off, you've got a weak, relatively weak global appetite. That seems to be the major concern, and we understand that certainly starting with the likes of China. I feel as though it's a different proposition completely with India. But the, the issue simply is that you've got structural weakness for the finished products. That really is causing much concern. And where that rolls forward, we understand the fragility as far as the U.S., consumer and we also take on board what's happening as far as the job picture and this is the likes of you know when you're thinking of governor chris waller and fed president from new york john williams they're certainly worried about the, the you know the damage or the undue undue damage to the labor market and that was demonstrated friday night with weaker than expected nfp so th we're really just seeing where we are with rate policy and you've also got to understand we're at record high territory when it comes to equity markets. So what's going to crack from here? Will it be precious metals? Will it be industrial metals? Or it could go back to crude on oil derivatives? You know, I think that um, the first one to bounce, and I think there's more upside for anything, it will be quite simply the precious metal market. But if you're looking as far as what's happening with the base metals, I probably, I think, continued softness we bounced up from what we were, you know, five or six months ago. It did bounce to the upside, but it's certainly taken all that hot air has come out of it over the last couple of months. And it just can't seem to find any momentum to the upside in the short term anyway. So let's um, we're, we're conscious as far as US dollar. We've got to see what happens as far as rate policy. We've got ECB this week and Fed next week. So it's a it's a big, you know, week and a half to two weeks of data drops. And we've just got to hold on and hang on and see uh, whether we, how it positions itself naturally into October. Peter, uh, so in your mind, if one has to really look at a trade here, is the mm -hmm. trade towards commodity producers then, commodity consumers, if it is moving away from commodity producers, which means that India will do well, Australia will go down, China will do, do well, and perhaps Russia will go down? You know, I just think, first off, I, there is some merit to that. I feel as though that, you know, you've probably got relatively strong demand or relatively OK demand if you're looking at what we've exported out of here in the sense of coal and, of course, iron ore and other metals. Australia's positioned itself relatively OK, but there's still the fabric of the, of the domestic economy is structurally fairly weak. Um, if you're looking as far as crude oil picture, there seems to be a little bit of uncertainty. You've got the likes of Goldman saying, you know, you're going to see production increases by year end starting in December. We're conscious as far as the OPEC plus eight, those eight G8 countries banding together and what they're doing as far as, um, you know, collectively uh, pushing that back out for two months as far as cuts. So, or, or well, the output cuts, that is. And then you've got to see where we are as far as the likes of precious metals and so on. So I feel as though keep an eye on precious, keep an eye on, you know, the base metals. And uh, there might be a dollar to be made in the kunj, but you've got to be very careful.
Very careful. Thanks so much, Peter, for making time and speaking with us. That's the latest coming in as far as the commodity front is concerned. But we are keeping it with the energy transition theme and what's happening in the Indian market and the industry.